Hello everybody, Six Speed Dakota here. And here. And here. And here. Pretty cool, eh? Well, it's after Christmas and I got this GoPro Hero 3 that I love so much and I've made a clamp-on mount out of a wood clamp. And of course I have a new tripod now so people can stop complaining that my videos are all shaky. So, today we are working on the Six Speed Dakota. Looks a little bit nicer than the last time everybody saw it, that's for sure. And my insurance definitely went up quite a bit to uh, compensate for that, unfortunately. Um, aside from the point, uh, I just changed the oil a little while ago and I've been too lazy to rotate the tires. So now what I think, uh, now it's time to do is we're going to rotate the tires front to back and we're going to clean the brakes out. So i am already got a video up on rotating tires on a different vehicle, so now I'm just going to teach you guys how to clean out, service, and lubricate, and adjust drum brakes. So, let's get started by getting the truck up in the air. Okay, so now we're going to dis disengage the parking brake. Make sure you have your front wheels blocked when doing this. Okay, so tools you're going to need, you're going to need your lovely BFH, flat blade screwdriver, a blow gun if you want to speed this process up a little bit, of course a couple ice cream pails for water. So. Gently coax the drum off. Now don't wail on the drum. Just enough to crack it loose. You can already tell that the brake adjustment is actually pretty decent in this. There we go. Massive drum on the ground. Alright, now the next step is we're going to have to clean the brakes off. Alright, now we got to clean the brakes out. So I got a bucket of water here and the catch bucket underneath. Now, what I like to do, this is just soapy water. Some people could use brake clean. I don't like to use it too much. It stinks, costs money, water's free. As long as you pay your water bill, of course. This will help neutralize any dust in the air, if there is any. Now just gently pour. This is a little bit of a messy job. There we go. 
Yeah, you got most of it in the bucket. Okay, so now it's time to clean the drum. Now this is just dust. All it is is just carbon dust. There's nothing harmful in it. So don't hate on me. Just be gentle. Don't try to uh, force too much dust out. Is uh, kind of made a mistake there. You don't want to breed this stuff, really. It's, there's no asbestos in brake pads anymore. There hasn't been since the 1970s. Now we take a rag and quickly wipe the friction surface so it doesn't develop a rusty coating. It'll do it anyway really but as soon as you hit the brakes a couple times it'll come right off. Now the one thing you want to make sure is when you look inside here that this is nice and smooth. There's no real grooves or ridges. There's a little bit over here but that's kind of where the edge of the pad contact area is so that's okay. You want to make sure that there's no stress cracks inside here. Because if there is, you'd probably be, probably be looking at a new drum. Of course, you replace the drum when you replace the uh, brake shoes. Since the ones on there, assuming that they're still good, are already worn to it. So, let's go back to the truck and we'll dry the brakes off. Alright, now, don't hate on me for this one either. But it's okay to use the blow gun because any of the dust is trapped in the water and is now free from the brake drum. So we don't have to worry about our health. Okay, so let's talk about drum brakes here for a second. Now what obviously different is they're contained inside a drum. But a drum brake uses these shoes to push out against that friction surface there. Which you see is kind of rusty now that I've air dried it, but that's not too bad. Anyhow. So how they basically work is this wheel cylinder here pushes out against the shoes and then the shoes push out against this surface of the drum right there now they have a kind called self energizing or servo brakes and they have non servo brakes now servo brakes actually can move they have a movable lower mounting point so when this shoe here which is the leading shoe pushes against the drum, it actually grabs this and actually jams the secondary shoe, which would be the back one, against the drum even harder. And that's what's called self-energized or servo brakes. These are non-servo because they're solid mounted at the bottom. So these theoretically don't break as well, even though this thing actually pretty much breaks pretty well. So we don't really have to worry about that too much. I see no need to upgrade to discs. I mean... As you can see, the shoe doesn't look like it's got a ton of meat on it here. But really, these shoes don't have a whole ton of material on them to start with. This truck's got six, almost 66,000 miles. And I've never touched the brakes, and I've owned it since 17.5. So I'm going to have to do the fronts pretty soon. But the rears, they show barely any signs of wear. So one other thing that you got to know is that silver guy right there. So right here... So this silver guy right here is the star adjuster. Come on. Still getting used to my new tripod here. So what this guy does is this spring links down to the lower part of the shoe, of the front leading shoe. So when the brakes come out and this shoe overextends, it actually pulls this guy downward and that rotates the star adjuster. And that's what cranks the brakes out. And then the wheel cylinder pushes out more to compensate for that. So, 
what we got to do initially. And I think that's pretty much it. You got to spring down below right here to hold the shoes against the stop. And then you got to spring up above right here, which holds the shoes into the wheel cylinder. And then you got this spring right here, which holds the adjuster onto the star, the star wheel here. So this system is very simple actually. And then you got these two little clips here one on either side that hold the shoes to the backing plate. The backing plate is very important. It's actually pretty thick. And that's because it actually holds the shoes in place. There's a friction surface on the back of the backing plate here. So that we're going to have to lubricate. So the first thing we're going to check here is that our wheel cylinder is not leaking. So what you can do is you can use a screwdriver or anything really. Peel back the boot. And look inside. You should not see any kind. You, you should not see any kind of liquid in there. If you see any kind of brown liquid, that's most likely brake fluid. And these ones look bone dry. These actually do a pretty good job of sealing. Now, there is actually a friction surface. Let me bring my JVC camera back a little bit. So if you look on the GoPro. There's one right here and here. There's one in the middle right here. You can just barely see it. And there's one down in the bottom here that we got to lubricate. And what we used to lubricate it with is good old ANCs. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our ANCs. I'm starting to run out here. We're going to take our ANCs. We're actually going to pry the shoe back, just gently. You'll notice right here is the contact pad. Just going to smear some on there and let it go. Same with this one. This will prevent grooves from wearing into the contact pads and keep from having so when you replace these pads these the brake shoes sometimes you have to grind their polish those pads up smooth and we don't want to do that because that wears down the that wears down the brakes the uh, the backing plate so now for the middle one which is right here There it is. It's hard to see, I know. And then the bottom one is down on the bottom here. There we go. Make sure you put a decent coating on there so that it has something to slide against. Now what I always like to do is I don't usually put any anti-seize on the threads of the star adjuster here because this is actually pushing out, threading out. So if you ever do these brakes, what you can do is you can, put, you can thread the star adjuster all the way out, put some anti-seize on, thread it all the way back in. But what I do like to do here is just put a little bit of anti-seize on here to help things slide smoothly. Now my anti-seize is kind of chunky, so bear with me. And then, you know, you can go around the wheel studs or whatever if your drum was really, really stuck on there. That doesn't matter too much. So I'm going to do this other side here, and then we'll move on to the next step, which is adjusting the brakes. Okay, now we're going to talk about my least favorite part of this job, and that's brake adjustment. Because this can go so wrong so quickly. Basically, you want the shoes about even in the wheel cylinder. You know, this is, there's no exact science to this. Put the drum on if I avoid the trouble right here. So with the drum back on, when you rotate it, these should just barely drag. This one doesn't sound too bad. I don't know why it's being such a pain to get on and off. But in order to adjust them, you have to turn this star adjuster in the direction it rotates. 
So you can hear the star adjuster go click, click, click. So I turn it maybe about three clicks. Three to five is a good start. All right, so basically you want it so that it doesn't drag too much. Remember I am rotating the axle and the drive line at the same time. But if you turn it like this, you can feel that there's not too much drag. You may want to go a little bit tighter than this. I like a little bit looser rather than tighter, but if you're worried about it, don't adjust it. Just leave it as it is. Unless you're having brake problems or your brake pedal's quite close to the floor, then you might want to crank them out a bit. But just, just so that they barely drag. You can just hear them dragging. So that's perfect right there. So now we're going to take it for a short drive and make sure that everything's okay. So first thing we're going to do is cycle the parking brake a few times. Press the brake a few times. That should align the, sh the shoes. Now you may notice that the braking might be a little bit choppy or a little bit uh, a little bit uh, different for the first few stops. But you saw all that rust that formed on the drum, so that's one of the reasons. The other one is you're just getting the shoes lined back up again. Do a couple of nice easy stops, make sure that the brakes work before we take them out on the road. Perhaps I should turn my lights. about 20 25 around there somewhere make sure nobody's behind us and just make a nice easy stop with the clutch out we just want to work the brakes a couple of times and make sure that we can get those pads seated up nicely and not to let the camera go flying speed here so we're doing about 35 or so miles an hour about 50k eh, it's not breaking too bad you have to a little bit faster now first aid kit. Really the brakes feel pretty much normal. Sometimes they're a little bit grabbier but that goes away after first couple stops.
You don't want your pedal to feel mushy or like it's sinking too far. If it's sinking too far, then your brakes are too far out of adjustment. So you may notice if you did crank the adjuster in that the pedal doesn't go down as far, which is a good thing. But how I gauge how it needs to be, if it needs to be adjusted, is by come on, how far the parking brake goes down. If the parking brake goes down a long ways, then chances are it's going to need to be adjusted. Now, if the parking brake should be, it should firm up maybe about two thirds of the way down, but you should never be able to really push it to the floor unless you really lean on it, which you shouldn't really lean on it. It's moderate pressure. So this is the way I like it. Now, if it's too tight, then the drums are going to heat up and they're going to be all heat scored and whatnot. So, and also, it's going to cost you fuel economy as well. So that's why we don't want to adjust them too tight. But my policy is we don't want to adjust them if we don't have to. If we turn the drum and it drags a little bit. Now, it's harder to see on this one because when you turn the drums, you're you're turning the whole drive line. But on a, like something like a Honda Civic, which is basically the same style, just a lot smaller, you can really feel it because there's no, it's just a freewheeling hub. So that's my little spiel on that. So just tell it's dragging slightly, no more, no less. Now when you plunk the drum back on, now what I didn't mention because I was kind of in a hurry, is you should put both drums on both sides and then hit the parking brake a couple of times and that'll adjust the shoes to where they should be. And then you can twist it back and forth and see how much more adjustment you need. The drums can be kind of hard to put on, especially if you get the shoes out of line. So that's my little spiel on that. I hope you like this video. Coming from the back of the Dodge there. This is kind of cool. I might have to do an actual proper driving video now that I got double camera angle. So anyhow, thank you for watching everybody. Um, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. So facebook.com slash 6 Dakota and at 6 Dakota on Twitter. If you got any good big car questions to ask me, you can ask me on uh, like my Facebook page and ask me send me a message there, or send me a PM on YouTube. If it's a small little question, then you can leave it in the comments. Um, yeah, so with my double camera thing, I'm hoping to do a trailer towing video and I'm ho how to tow a trailer. <laughs> And uh, pretty soon, maybe in the next day or so, i got to take this thing in for an emissions test. So in the next couple days, I'm going to make a video. I'll post it sometime later, but I'm going to make a video on how to make your vehicle ready for an emissions test. But anyhow, I'm sitting here wasting my fuel. So uh, good night, everybody. Thank you for watching our good day or whatever it is. Now it's 7.30 and I need to eat dinner. So thanks for watching, everybody. Take it easy.